Hello everyone, it's Melanie from Speaking Styles. Now following on from talking about getting clear and confident around how to talk about your business, especially when faced with having to do elevator pitches or someone says, what do you do? So today I wanted to do a follow on from that training on how to actually hold a conversation, how to continue that conversation once you've done your pitch or you've explained a little bit more about your business so that you can actually start to connect those relationships which actually grows yourself and your business and then to really start to reduce that no like and trust effect by six months so in this video i want to share with you five of my top tips on how to start a conversation how to keep it going and really start to build those relationships with people now these are super simple and easy to follow strategies and it's something that we overlook time and time again when it becomes when it comes to networking we seem to overcomplicate it overthink it seem like we have to projectile vomit all of the knowledge that we have instead of just building relationships okay so go to networking event and sometimes we want to be able to get in there first because this is how we change the way in which we do networking rather than waiting for that person to say what do you do and you suddenly go oh gosh i don't have my elevator pitch i don't really know what to say you be in control of how that conversation goes and this is my first point is Hi, I'm Melanie. What's your name? Super simple, easy, basic, right? But that's how we stop those irritating questions that people ask us and we don't like it. Let's change that. Hi, I'm Melanie. What's your name? Step one. Step two, express appreciation. Give a compliment to that person because who doesn't like, like a good compliment? However, and as well, it actually builds foundations. You've started to lower that barrier, you're breaking the ice. So by expressing appreciation or giving a compliment, it could say that that person is wearing a nice top, a nice bag, or whatever it is that they have on them, or they have a nice smile, it's really warm and welcoming, and that's how I came over to speak to you, because you had a warm, approached, open posture, ready to be able to have that conversation. It can be super, super simple. That person is now relaxed, they're open, they know that they can start to get to know you, like you, and trust you, because you're not coming off salesy, you're not going in with those direct questions of what do you do, you're just getting to know that person. So now that you've said hello, you've expressed some form of appreciation and a compliment, now we want to go in with our open-ended questions, because that's how we have a two-way conversation with people. So the first one could be is, how's your week been? What's the best thing that's happened to you this week? So we start to flip that stress level that that person could be having and start to find out what is that amazing thing that's happened to them this week. Getting them to reduce their stress levels and be able to bring them back into that present moment. And they start to focus on something amazing, right? And we get to deeply listen to what they have to say. Because a lot of people jump straight into negative about how busy they are, how much they have no time. We want to be able to flip that. We want to build a positive relationship. Open-ended questions. You could say, uh, how, how often have you been to these events? Have you been to them before? What do you love about attending these events? See, we're actually um, asking open-ended questions. So then you could go into, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? What's really good to do here locally? And then we be present, we start to deeply listen to that person. So when we ask people what do they do in their spare time or what do they love about doing in their spare time, we begin to hear what they're saying. 
because a lot of people will say, oh, I used to you know, go for long walks along the beach, however, I just don't have time, my business is really busy, or when you start to be able to hear the problems and the challenges that they are having, and you might just have the solution to that problem, or you know someone else. We're not going to jump in at this point and say anything. We're just going to continue to listen to that person. Because all people want to have is to be listened to and understood. Okay? That problem and that solution that you have or someone else has, you bank that for later. Okay? We're building a relationship right now. We're showing empathy for that person. So then my next point is, we want to be asking, what are you passionate about? What lights you up inside? So we notice how we haven't asked, what do you do yet? We want to break down the barriers, the judgments, everything else that goes with it when we ask the what do you do question. What lights you up inside? People will begin to tell you more about what lights them up inside and they will probably tell you some things that they might be struggling with as well. So these are two really amazing questions when we listen deeply. We start to bank up and we start to empathize and we can really show our interest to that other person. So be of service when we are having conversations with people. People love that, okay? We can start to find common ground around what they're passionate about. Is it something aligned with your values, with your purpose, with everything else that goes with it? Are you starting to connect, become relatable? Can you be able to respond to their responses with something that could be relatable to them? Parts of your story that you could share with them. So that's number four. Number five. Now, you don't want to just stay with that one person, right, at a networking event. You want to be able to speak to many more people. So a great way to end that as well, because that's another thing that people um, find really difficult, is to end that to be able to go somewhere else and say, I'd love to be able to carry this conversation on maybe later offline, um, not offline, but later on outside of this networking event. Um, would it be okay to connect with you on social media? What is your most preferred platform to be on? And connect with them. Okay, so you notice how we haven't exchanged business cards? We haven't really asked about what they do because we're building a relationship. You connect with them on the spot, and then what you do is the next day you follow up with them. Send a message on that preferred platform, and you say, how great was it to, to connect with you last night? You think of some of those points that they raised. So it's really good to get to know you more um, and understand more about your passions and your hobbies and things like that. It'd be great to be able to connect with you more. Would you love to be able to grab a coffee? Right? Super simple and easy, right? And we get to change the way in which we network. We get to change that question from what do you do to building a relationship and reduce that no like and trust by six months. So that's my five top tips. Introduce yourself, then start to ask open-ended questions, give appreciation to that person, start to listen to what they're telling you, and then end it with connecting on a social media platform. So that is my five top tips on how to start, continue, and end a conversation with people at networking events. I hope that's been really helpful for you and I look forward to being able to connect with you more um, in the next episode. All right, bye for now.